continue to drop if someone could drop the minutes in the Thank you. yep i'll do that that would be that would be helpful so welcome everyone to our data science working group meeting the happy valentine's day edition so we have your question of the day, which is what was your favorite subject in school? Mine was math. I was going to be a math teacher, but I realized I don't really like kids and that sounded like a terrible idea. So computers were better for me. Uh, we've got, yeah, we've got an interesting, interesting mix here. Uh, a couple of maths, some science related biology ones, uh, English, very good. Oh, biology is a popular one. Interesting. Um, I always find it, side note, I always find it fascinating, like the people that I work with in, in technology have so many interesting interests outside of technology. Um, and a lot, a lot of them have really interesting backgrounds, which I think is, uh, I just think that's fun. I like it. Um, okay, so the first thing on the agenda today is an announcement. So I have a co-chair. Chan is going to co-chair this working group with me. So this was one of the only working groups that we didn't have two chairs. And uh, so I am I'm super excited. So I don't know, Chan, if you want to say a few words. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Chan. I'm um, a, a project manager with the Comcast OSPO. Um, but my background is in data science um, and um, Happy to be chair. So really excited to be part of this group and to see more of you. Awesome. Thank you so much for volunteering. It's a it's a huge help, especially with lots of conference travel. It's nice to have have two of us working on it. Um, plus, I think you have some different different skills that I think will be will be good for the for the group as well. Yeah. Thanks uh, so for look, me. yeah. Uh, in the last meeting, we started talking about the insight guides. Um, the only thing I really want to mention here is that I've, I've made a lot of progress. So if you, that link takes you to a list of, of issues. So for every current proposed insight guide, which is a bunch of things that I have proposed, um, I've created an issue. I've um, created the doc uh, to work in for these uh, insight guides. I was it not recording before? It was. It stopped. Uh, no, shut your. That was me. I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> I paused it for like two seconds. I'm sorry. Okay, no worries. No worries. I thought we had started it, and then I was starting to question question myself. Um. So for each of these insight guides, I've created an issue. Um. I've created the doc so that they're owned by the chaos community. I've defined kind of the, the two to four metrics for each of the insight guides uh, kind of to start with. That doesn't mean we can't change them, but it, it gives us a it gives us a starting point anyways. So I've done some of the some of the pre-work on all of these. So um, if you're interested, feel free to uh, to claim one, leave a comment or assign yourself. This is this is um, really just to prevent any disappointment with people who um, start to work on something and then realize that someone else was already had already started it and it just eliminates duplication of effort. Um, but we're all all collaborating on these, so so feel free to to collaborate on on any of these, whether someone else has claimed it or or not. Um, any any question on the insight guides? I don't necessarily want to dive into a lot of detail on them. The responsiveness one is almost done, so if you want to see an example of what these look like, that's that's the place to start. Okay. If there are no questions on the insight guides, uh, we can, because we talked about them for a while last week, I feel like we don't need to spend much time on them here. I wanted to um, turn it over to Callie to talk about 8Not. And do you want me to stop sharing so that you can share? Sure, we can do that. Um, I know, yeah, I think there is, Pretty much I was planning on talking about the just that one graph that we had been trying to figure out a better name for. Um, I can also demo some of the newer stuff that we have or just be curious to know what people are interested in seeing with 8 Not right now. I'll start pulling it up. Cool. Yeah. 
Is the we were talking about the lipstick graph. I think we changed it to the lottery factor. We'll see what. Let's see. Give me. I lost. Zoom. I personally, well, while Kelly gets stuff up, I personally strongly prefer a lottery factor to bus factor. I think we should. Uh, I should think yeah. we should consider renaming that that metric personally. But Way happier scenario. Yeah, for another uh another meeting other than the data science one but i agree with callie on that yeah i think that's what we now that i think about this i don't know if the yeah the polyphrasy we just ended up changing it over to lottery at some point it might be that there hasn't been it's not on the met, the other the chaos instance of eight not um i'm not for sure but if there's it was just turned out to be a pretty long title we were using the polypharmacy before i think we were trying to say they have a discussion around it i'm trying to remember if there is um because this is from like a conversation before the new year i'm trying to remember what this was for exactly but i don't remember Anyway, so do you, by any chance, do you remember, Don, what this was specifically, re was it specifically referencing to these visualizations and then we just have updated it since then? I'm trying to remember what it was for. Yeah, I think, um, sorry, can you hear me? I've lost, I've lost my windows. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think you, you had a, a visualization that was called contributor prolificity, and I don't remember if it was this one or something else, but I think nobody really knew what that meant. And so I think the discussion yeah. was whether or not there was a better a better name for that. Let me make sure that it's not. Oh, yeah, I think we, we might have changed it over to lottery factor. Okay. Um, I honestly think that it might have been lottery factor before. I don't really, I'm trying to remember. It's been so, <laughs> it's been so long since we were talking about this, but um, these are the different, and I think we were talking before as well that like maybe the lottery factor or bus factor shouldn't be in a pie chart format, that it should be, you were talking about it being a bar chart. I'd be curious to see if people had, if anybody had thoughts on kind of that side of things as well. I remember you'd opened an issue about that. Yeah, I personally like this as a bar chart because you're never you're never going to show um a hundred percent of the contributors. There's always yeah. going to be a huge chunk of other. And when you're talking about the lottery factor, I think you don't care as much about other. You really care about who are the top, you know, top mm -hmm. ten or or so. Uh, Sophia, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I was going to say um, I like stacked bar if you're showing it over a year or over time. If it's yeah. a point in time, then I think that something like this does like a, a pie chart shows the distribution a little bit more in your face, but you can't really do any sort of trending with it. But knowing that going from a bar chart to a stack bar is, are also two different charts entirely. <laughs> like I don't wanna add yeah. more complexity here. It's just whether or not you're planning on showing it over time or at a one point in time. Yeah, and that's what this actually here is trying to do. But it seems it's like not in the bar chart format that you're talking about. It's actually these are all line. This is showing what your lottery factor oh, I, looks I see. like. Yeah. Okay. Over yeah, the and the reason, the reason I like it as a bar chart is that um like the like the pie chart, it's it's always gonna have that huge chunk of other. And if you if you eliminate the other, then I feel like that's weird on a bar chart. Like what you really care about are like the top X contributors. Um, and I feel like looking at the top X contributors is easier to do on a bar chart. Um, I'll, I'll plus one that to Don as well. Cause I think if you're thinking about the the risk, it's knowing who specifically they are um, versus yeah. the percentage. Yeah. That does make sense. Okay, that's good to think about. Um, the two, since I'm here, Kelly, are those those two are connected? Obviously, the pie chart and the line chart. Yes, connected like conceptually. Yes. Um, 
And so just looking at it, may, others may think differently, but the way I had read it would be the one on the right actually seems to give me a broader overview and then moving to the left like like i think they think they should be flipped basically oh yeah like the, the one on the right should be sense. on the left and the one on the left should be on the right so yeah i really this i really like this this is one of my favorite graphs honestly because i think it's really cool to be able to see what that looks like over time there's like it's a little bit complicated, but it is. But like that, the one on the right tells me that the lottery factor again, the colors are very hard to read. I will say yeah. that the lottery factor um, at that spike, yeah, is twelve people. And so, if mm -hmm. I wanted to know who those twelve people were, I would have to go to the left. Is that right? And figure out who yeah. those people are. So what I'm saying is, I think it reads better if that chart on the right is on the left so i can see that there's these are the gross numbers and then yeah. if i want to understand who those people actually are kind of like just reading a book yeah that makes complete sense okay put that in cool nobody has anything else about this i was at least just show this is a new page that we have be good to get any feedback from people if there's some stuff interesting or other information that you would want to view and like a this is what we're calling it like a repo overview page to be able to get some of like the higher level information that people want when looking at like a repository and org for the first time and so like you have like the language the file language or the lines of code breakdown to understand like how what the breakdown of the project is the versioning up to dateness OSSF scorecard because this is something that people ask us about a lot and then the just general information that we're able to get about the repository this is something that we're able to do over break and so I just wanted to show it because we've been this is all new from the last time we've had I've, I've been in one of the meetings really like this um so that uh, that per repo analysis is where you select the repo, right? Because this is looking at the whole yeah. Thing. Okay. Yeah, because you can select the because these two visualizations can be built in aggregate, okay. um, but because it's like the OS, like the scorecard and the repo information has to be done on a repository, like by repository yeah. level, and so that's why you have to do a selection. And so this is just going to put all the repositories that you have in your, like, that you're using to populate the entire thing. It's pretty much just like, okay, just select one of them that you want to see. And then you can get all the, inform like, the scorecard information and then all of the, like, more, like, high level, like, if there's a license, code of conduct, all that stuff, so then you don't have to go searching for it. I like this. I really like it. Can you scroll up again? Mm -hmm. I like the package version updates uh, pie chart. It is really cool. I like it's. The one thing I'm, I want to make sure to, I don't really know how to, like I can put it in the about graph but I might need to just put it out there more is that there's some repositories that have pretty much no information around this. And so it can look like either that they like have everything up to date um, or there's no data here. And it's like, not that they don't use packages is that it's not handled in a way that like GitHub is able to like calculate it from my understanding. And I think Sophia might have some thoughts because she has her hands up. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about that exactly, which was sort of the, I know this is looking at one repository, but not actually how many items or files are being represented in the charts. So I think that I might be the, oh, so yeah, I see what you hover over it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was thinking that maybe you need a legend that basically adds that detail. Um, Cause if you're basically yeah. saying that this isn't counting everything, if it doesn't have anything listed. So it's like, this represents X files of this many, if, if you can pull those things, um, just because I think that would, that would call out your point of not 
this could be misrepresenting it if it actually has a bunch of ones that aren't labeled at all. Yeah, I need to, I'm probably will talk to Sean a little bit more about how this infer, like what is and isn't represented in sure. the packages versions like table. Cause there's like really big repositories that show to have none. And I'm like, I know that's like, I, was like, I know the, both of these things are probably true, but how and what I'm trying, I'm for then yeah. I can get that information. Um, there's, there's like uh, a lot of languages uh, we're, we're scanning for package versions, I think, on 15 of the most common languages right now. So the ones without any data are, they're likely used, like, for example, C does not have a great package manager. So something written in C mm -hmm. isn't going to show um, that data. That makes sense. And the, the limitations make sense. I just want to make sure that I'm providing that information in the visualization so people have that context. For sure. Sweet. Well, I can, unless anybody has anything else, I'll stop sharing and go to some other things. That was really interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah. I always like seeing the updates of what, what you all have done recently. Yeah, next time we'll have the the heat map series will be finished, and so we'll be able to show the three different heat maps all together, which I think is might be a, a metric models concept. I, I think that's work. It might be working backwards, but I've really liked like now I've started to fully kind of lean into the. I really like the idea and the verbiage of metrics models, and I'm trying to stay to get that adopted. Like. Whenever I talk about like this, I want to make sure even within like Red Hat and stuff, we're saying using the terminology metrics models. But I feel like those three heat maps together is a metric model of some sort. Go ahead, Matt. Yes. Just a question, uh, just kind of on the design overall. How are you all thinking about the like adding new visualizations while? Mm -hmm still kind of offsetting information overload that people may have, because there does seem to be a tendency for people to look at a lot of visualizations and like just not be able to bring it all in. At yeah. One and so are you thinking about that at all in the design? I would say that's something that it'd be great to have help on, because I know it's something that's happening when people get on to eight not for the first time. One thing I never really had predicted is the amount of people who don't really even the search bar isn't like clicking of what that is of like the fact that you'd use you'd put the repositories into the search bar to make that populate the graphs it's like even down to that level of like having where users understand what they're looking at and able to find what they need we need help <laughs> I, I think that's the best way of putting it of trying to figure out okay what is the right solution I think all of the graphs that we have right now are really useful, but to having it to where people can find what they need need and not get, like, how do you get this to be something that isn't overwhelming or it's going to be overwhelming, but like, does it push people away on first look? Yes. And so to Sophia's question, I do think there are folks who are interested in design, who have helped us a lot, say even on our project badging stuff, just very simple designs and trying to get people the right information. So Victory is, is commenting. So yes, I think we have people that could help out here. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Sean. Yeah, I've read. Enoch and I have talked about uh, reaching out to Cass Africa for some design work to make suggestions to a not the most the biggest feedback that I, I got at uh, FOSDEM when people were looking at it. And also there was a meeting last week where we looked at it that I wasn't in is when you come to it, people want to be able to revisit the groups that they've created right in the eight not interface. I think I actually mentioned that to you already, Kelly. So sort of getting a sense of how big the sea is. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, anything else on eight knot? Any other questions, comments? 
Okay. Um, sorry, Matt, you started to go off mute and then it was just about like doing design work is it's just a, it's a heavy lift sometimes. And so if we were going to support that, we probably want to think about, uh, like a workflow by which people could contribute design where you might think a good first place to start would be Callie. Yeah. Or, you know, like that, as opposed to just saying, here's, what, here's the thing. <laughs> just make yeah. It that's what I probably will need some guidance on it as well from the, from like a technical perspective, like between James and I, if we were able, like if we had help on how, of what that design would even look like of being like, okay, these are the colors that would be more interpretable changing up the organization, somebody to be able like to be able to get that feedback. The implementation is not the difficult side of it, especially with how, with using Dash. Um, but I don't even, I guess I would it would be curious to know what that looks like in other projects. And like what, I guess I need to do a little bit more, like some research on what that process has looked like in other projects and what has worked. <laughs> And so that'll be, I'd probably be the first step, at least on our side, just trying okay. to figure out. Or if people have like, oh, this has worked before, or this is like the normal workflow of trying to do design work on a website for an open source project, that like, anything like that would, like I would just would want to go off of what has been done before that has been like a good workflow. Okay. I, I, yeah, I suspect Brian has some ideas that would be helpful. My experience is that you don't want to design by committee. <laughs> you you want to have a good designer that kind of helps you lay things out, and then you can disagree with it. And this we are, we are talking about eight knot design in the Augur eight knot meeting that uh, I know you were traveling for this week, Kelly. But when we have, that's on Mondays at nine. So maybe we could put on the agenda for for that meeting a discussion about. Um, maybe a discussion about how to approach design. So not designed by committee, but maybe we could get, you know, somebody like Victory and, a, uh, you know, anybody else that's interested, maybe just to talk to us about how the design process works and what to expect and uh, maybe some some suggestions. Because I think, I think at this point, nobody quite knows what to do. Um, and so yeah. I think, I think maybe just a brainstorming session about design would be helpful. Sophia. Yeah. I can't help but say it because he just came out of a conference where this there's a very similar topic that I'd love to find the slides and share the back of the group. Um, at State of Open Con in London last week, there was a whole uh, track on the Open Data Collective. And one of the presentations was from a researcher who was looking at data portal design uh, and design best practices and had like all of these various frameworks they had created. Granted, the, the portals that they were thinking about were a lot more comprehensive and thinking about how countries release data to researchers to the general populace. Um, but I think a lot of the principles actually apply here because after all, a data visualization tool is basically kind of like a data portal in the sense of we're trying to provide an easier way to consume this as a resource. So I want to dig that up and I'll, I'll shove it in the notes and it's a little bit tangential, but I think a lot of the principles still apply here and I'd love to bring that into consideration. That'd be great, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move on because we're about almost halfway through the meeting. Um, so the next the next three agenda items are, are actually related to each other because in in the last data science working group meeting and in the last OSPO, or maybe not the last one, maybe the time before, one of the recent OSPO working group meetings, we we talked about how people can contribute to the data science working group with the idea that across the chaos project, there are probably some things that uh, some analysis that we could use that would be a good way for people to use their data science skills, maybe learn some new data science skills and, and work on some, some projects together that would benefit the whole chaos community. So, so that was kind of the rough, rough discussion that we had um, here. And then we had it um, again in the um, OSPO working group meeting. And I think Sophia has some, some links here. I'm not sure 
I'm not sure what the status is or how much progress we made because I missed the last OSPO working group meeting. But the one before that, we had talked about some, we had talked about a potential project and it spiraled out of control. And all of a sudden we realized that this was probably more like three to five projects. Um, so I don't know, Sophia, if you have any updates on. Yeah, so that, that was, I think we had said we need someone to take this as an action item and I said I can help. And then I left the country for two weeks and didn't do anything. Um, and so basically I wanted to see where I could pick this up again. The two links are of, one is where we had a conversation in the OSPO working group of things that possibly people will be interested in. So that's literally a copy paste of the notes that we took. Um, and so I wanted to basically put the links in this doc just so that I could find them again. <laughs> Um, the other link was to, I think, what you described as a project template of maybe what we would want to share with folks um, to try to get their input here. But given that we got some info from the input from the OSPO working group, I, I can turn that notes file into something that's a little bit more prescriptive or like these are particular projects and potentially maybe how we might scope them to bring it back to this group. So this is not ready to be discussed as a potential pitch, but um, I mostly wanted to resurface this because I really like this idea. I know we had a number of people in this extended community that were interested in taking on data science-like projects that are, are in broader support of the chaos community. So I think I would like to turn this into something that looks a little bit more like a, a list of things that people could take on if they want to, um, and then know who to contact and know who their stakeholders are. Because there's a lot of, a lot of open-ended questions here or like who actually cares about this <laughs> that we might want to answer before we say take this on. Um, but I just want to re resurface it again that this is something that I'm happy to to iterate on for next meeting and then hopefully present something that's a little bit more um, readable and actionable. And then maybe we can say, OK, this is not enough information. How do we get more? And we can bring it back to the OSPO working group, um, because I think that's where a lot of these came from. So if that's yeah, it. That, that would be perfect. Thank you, Sophia. So I think the the short of this is, is stay tuned because it looks like we've got some some projects that people can work on and use some of their some of their data science skills coming out of the OSPO working group. Um, but then we also and I think Chan, um, you had this one. So do you want to talk about the um, another possible project? Yeah, sure. Um, and I think I, I didn't see the template for it. So what I can do is build this project out into the template so that um, it's uh, more thorough and detailed. Um, but for this one, um, I was approached by Jatal White um, at Microsoft, um, who is in the OpenSSF DEI working group. Um, and they've been talking about trying to find um, more event locations that are more inclusive. So for instance, uh, one of their Sauce Day events um, is gonna be in Alpharetta, Georgia, and they kind of question why it wasn't in Atlanta. And I'm sure there's a ton of variables um, but I found that the chaos community already created this metric on event location inclusivity. And I think it's a really great metric. Um, one of the questions they have is, can we dig into it deeper to find actual cities that would make sense? And could then um, people who are running events see this and choose locations? I know it changes. I know costs change every year or when the economy changes, but um, I wonder if um, we can find, if, or if we can make this into a small project where they can use it for right now. And I know some of you have, are the people who've contributed to this metric. I love this idea. I think it'd be great because there's, there's so much you need to think about, right? So like like the legal climate around things like you know, LGBTQ and, you know, trans rights and, um, you know, like women's health issues. Like there's all these variables that you could include in addition to things like, you know, like cost and transportation accessibility. And there's, there's all this, there's all this stuff. And I would love to see someone dig into this in a more structured way. I love yeah. this. Chan, how would this be so if you click on that link, Dawn. Yeah. So there are a couple of descriptions in there, some visualizations that are, that you can see some things by state. So if you just click on that link, say right below the United States, 
This one? Yep, that one, yeah. Well, apparently the link is not showing by state, but this is showing some of that data, at least okay. at the national level. I do think it shows it by state as well. Was there thoughts to be different from what this is showing? Um, just adding more variables in there, as Don had said, like adding in um, other legal um, issues, transportation costs, um, and then seeing if someone can help us find more data around those topics to include into a graph that um, you kind of see on the first chaos page. Or, on the, or this graph, um, like if we can contribute to this graph or, yep. um, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, because I feel like this is one important data point, but there are so mm -hmm. many other data points that um, that we could look at for event location inclusivity um, that I think, you know, this is a great data source and um, we should use it, but I think that there's loads of other variables that, that we should think about. Fair, yep. And then we might want to update that uh, metric also once we do this analysis and pull in some other um yeah some other options and other other data sources other variables yeah and full transparency i believe they're separately um going to lf to um see if they can have some influence with um with them but i think this would be a separate thing where we can build on this metric um and if anyone in the community wants to use it they could Cool. So I think the next step is Chan's going to put this into the template and define it a little bit more. And then, um, and it also might be good to create an issue around it. So we have a place that we can, we can track it and people can volunteer to help with various, various bits of it. But if you're, yeah, if you're looking for something, something to work on, and this seems interesting to you, um, I would start, start thinking about that and maybe, maybe reach out to Chan. Thanks, Ellen. Elizabeth had said she was interested in the chat. Awesome. Cool, I'll include you, Elizabeth. Cool. Sophie okay. is also interested. Just keeping track of the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a question on just like the projects to take on. So yeah. what I've been seeing in chaos is that we have an opportunity to kind of um, like set those initial steps for folks. And if I think about it, like with say the project badging stuff that we're doing, like we've kind of said, these are the four metrics that you should think about as an example. You've done it with the starter project health metric model. Like these are the four things that you should probably think about as you're getting rolling in this context. So I, I think in the data science working group, it'd be nice to think about what the data science initiatives are that have that impact downstream. And I know there's already stuff like Cali and like had talked about it with eight knot, but you know, what are those, what are those early things that folks could do in their organizations from a data science perspective to, to just get started? So, and I don't know how to do that, but it seems like a lot of people are, are willing to listen to the things that we have to say, because we talk about this a lot. <laughs> and so any guidance we can provide to people is just really helpful. Yeah. Okay. I'll just take that as a, as a note. Sean. Uh, just to add that I think if there's people willing to work on projects, those are good projects to work on. Sorry, which which ones are good projects? What does that mean? Yeah. If people, if if somebody like uh, this, what um, Chan laid out, oh yeah, there's a lot of interest around that. That sounds like something to work on. So, I mean, if people are interested, then uh, we have things that people want to work on, and we should work on them. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, so this this <clears throat> this working group is going to shift from just a bunch of stuff that Dawn has said she's going to do. Um, to some actual data science stuff that's happening within the community and making a little more 
a little more project focused and people can talk about, you know, some of the other, other stuff that, that we're working on and have some actual projects in addition to the stuff that, that we're all working on within are, our companies. Are companies struggling with data science work? You know, we talk like in the OSPO meeting, we don't really talk about data science. Struggling how so? Well, I, I don't know. Like our, our, companies hoping, wishing that they could do more detailed data science work, but just really don't know how to do it with respect to open source, you know, so. I, I would say there's a very big appetite within Red Hat and with it being kind of James and I being the main ones that are working on like doing the analysis, like we have to kind of constantly prioritize. It's like, we just can't, we don't have enough time in the day to do half of the things that people have appetite of learning and looking at from a data perspective around open source communities. So. Don, is your hand still up or we just need, did you forget to take it down? Okay. So Brian, what's your uh, I, take? Well, definitely echoing what Kelly said about within Red Hat. We are also seeing that with customers and partners too, that it, they're, they're even with the, um, even with companies that historically know how to do data science, they they may not understand. It's like they don't understand the API of getting into open source communities. They still feel like open source is some sort of mystical voodoo that cannot be measured. Um, you know, and of course, the first thing out of my mouth is go to chaos dot community. Um, <clears throat> But that's still a really valid thing because there, there are gaps in knowledge, not only in terms of the metrics that we're creating, but also still in terms of what open source is. People, you know, they have a rudimentary concept of it that they usually are quickly, they quickly discover they don't really know that much at all. It's not just throwing code in a GitHub repository and, and going, going at it. Um, there's a lot more to it. And when they learn that, and then they learn there might be ways of measuring that, you know, that's where we come into the conversation. Yeah, I would agree with Brian on that. I've always found that um, you have someone who has this really interesting question, um, and then you've got a, you know, an analyst who comes over and is like, yeah, I can sort through whatever data that is, but then no one wants to actually go out and spend all the time collecting that data or retrieving it or trying to get it. And so there's, there's a whole uplift in being able to do, um, to do that and then, and then ha do the fun stuff of analyzing to answer the question. Yeah, and I think again, it's it's kind of the same problem. It's the the data science is a similar problem as as what we see in other aspects of chaos, where people just people don't always just know what to do with it, right? So they don't really they don't really know what the possibilities are. So they don't know what to ask for, and if they don't already have data scientists who are giving them examples of the types of things they could work on, then I think they just never think to ask for it. Callie. Yeah. Um, one thing that's been interesting is I feel like in the last about six months, we finally had the data infrastructure and things there to be able to respond more to people's questions and the analysis they would like, like questions they have around community and going from like, I would say, we looked at like Q3 of last year, we probably had like two or three like reports that we were able to do to like help people make like decisions using kind of like some data around open source communities to now being to like the 10 to 15 range and just the last three months alone. And one thing that has been interesting is that a lot of times when people ask, even whenever they ask a very direct question, the analysis that I end up giving is very different. Because then I'm like, I've asked them follow-up questions because I would say most of the time people don't actually know what they want. They, and so we've actually had to, started to develop like a set of questions to be able to understand better what they're looking for so then we don't provide them something that doesn't actually help them towards the decision that they're trying to make. 
Um, so it's been a pretty interesting experience to see that all kind of come to fruition within the last couple of months. Any other thoughts? My own, this is really helpful. So thank you for this. Um, I, I was involved in the SPDX project for a long time. And for those of you that know SPDX, it can be a really long kind of daunting document to take a look at. And they created, I think kind of recently, like an SPDX light, you know, which is a sort of a short and condensed version for this SBOM just to be able to, to access it. And I, I just, I think about this a lot, like in data science, sometimes, or not even just this group, but sometimes I look at all the things and data and tools and metrics that are in front of us. And that's like SPDX, like full version, <laughs> nothing against SPDX. I love all y'all, but like just kind of getting that light version. And Sean had put some comments in there about like education programs that he's put together. Just like as a student is walking into an environment, no matter who that student is, whether they're in a university or a company, like what are those first steps to help get them to where they need to be? You know, what's that light version? So thanks, thanks for this conversation. Yeah, I was gonna like on that, it seems like, and I think this was something, a kind of a conversation that we had had at Member Summit, where it seems like most people that come into this either know a lot about community and know nothing about data science or know a lot about data science and nothing about community. And like the initial steps into it are honestly a little like, it's like for each of those personas is a little bit different of like what they need to know to be able to get there. Um, I would say though, that there's a, I think there's a lot, a lot less um, data, knowledge or like pro like people like just being able to sit and understand even graphs like basic graphs or stuff like that i think people have a lot of times have an overestimation of like how easy that might be or of like how intuitive it is versus like a lot of times it is like the first round or two of doing like data analysis work with people you kind of have to there's just a lot to learn and that's generic to whether you're analyzing open source or you're analyzing birds like it's just there's just so much there to learn. I mean, honestly, it's almost like just going back to the conversation we were having earlier here, just about the pie chart or the bar chart, and <laughs> like why why these make a difference for that mm -hmm. one particular metric. Um, just sorting that out. Sorry, I'm gonna interject just because I was literally working on this, like right before this call. Um, I was gonna pitch a talk, which is a panel on ways that we can improve data literacy <laughs> um, for many different parties. So I might tap some of you if you're open to be a part of that. Callie, I'm looking at you. Um, I have many but I, thoughts. Yeah, I know you do. And I think it would be a great, a great addition because I already have someone pegged for or the data engineering side, someone on the design side. Um, and then I thought I would love to have like a practicing data scientist who's working on the sort of how do we present this in a way that people could understand it side, just to kind of have views of all of those aspects. Um, because I think, I don't know, that to me, that was a huge takeaway from the event I was at last week is that we have all of this data, but there's a huge gap between those that are looking at it and those are understanding it and just generally all the different ways that we need to improve data literacy in order to put these things into actionable formats or ways that can be understood by people that can actually change the way they behave. And there is a huge gap there. And I think that the, the term data science tends to apply to like all of that in a way that there's a lot of complexity. And I, I loved your comment that different people are coming at it from different things and they have different gaps. Um, and so if we actively do want to improve data literacy, we need to be more open about all of those gaps in all those contexts. So um, I was going to potentially float that as a, a talk for all things open because I thought that might be a nice broad audience for yeah. something like that. Sorry, yeah, that's it. I'm just planting the seed now. <laughs> yeah, I, 
reach out to me. That sounds great. And I think that in about six months from now, I'll probably just for how much more that I know now than I did even three months ago, just from having so much more experience with it and having more requests come in, I think that's it's probably only going to grow from there. And with this really being like the year of the AI, um, I think there's going to be a lot of, I already have a lot of thoughts of, of whenever it comes to like the data space in the same way that like two or three years ago, everyone wanted to jump straight to ML. Like you have people like wanting to jump straight to AI instead of like all of the steps that can be in between that can be informative, um, which I think is, is kind of an interesting phenomenon that we just keep on repeating, but with different terms. <laughs> Okay, so my internet keeps dropping out, so I stopped my video and I'm not going to share, but we're almost done. Um, I feel like there was there was one more agenda item. There was oh. just uh, the question from science. I could do that real quick. Uh, that's part of the discussion we had about eight not already. And uh, there was a bug in the Augur API that I issued a PR for to fix this morning. Cool. Thanks, John. I think so, that was John, the last. Oh, go ahead, John. I was just going to say, I think that was the last um, agenda item. Um, and that we just, we have a minute left if anyone wants, wants to say anything else. No, all good. I think we lost Don. Yeah. <laughs> Don. <laughs> Don. No, we still you. have her picture. <laughs> well, but now we don't. That. <laughs> yeah. Internet is over in England. You might want to check the news. <laughs> All right. Well, well thanks, think, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. See you in two weeks. Yep.